Welcome to the Tony Scott Junior training. Today I'm going to show you the new concept for Danfoss hot tap valves called Tony Scott Redline. The concept is two suitcases. The other one contains the hot tap machine and the other contains the adapters that you need for the certain type of ball ball. Today, I'm gonna show you how to, how to make a DN150 steel line hot tap using DN150 Danfoss hot tap ball ball. Some of the features, low stem, the cork on the stem, the bottom end is weldable and the upper end has a thread for the hot tub machine connection. The machine that we're going to use today is Tonisco P30. Hot tub range for this machine is uh, from DN40, so one and a half inch up to DN200, which is eight inch. The machine comes in a handy suitcase where all the, all the different parts have their own, all have their own places on the suitcase. So if you just this, uh, remember always to disassemble the machine after use, clean all the parts and put it back to the suitcase, the machine will last forever. When hot tapping with the ball valve, we have to start by checking the valve that it works properly. So we want to check that the connection threads are clean and visually check that they look okay. Then we want to check that the ball works like it's supposed to work. So we're gonna see that the ball is now open. The mark here shows that it's open. Then we're gonna close the valve. See that the ball goes without problems. Everything seems to be okay. Then fully open the valve again. Like this. And then we're ready to start. Always when hot tapping with Tony Scott machines, the process starts by assembling the shaft. And for that, we're gonna measure the length from the surface of the pipe to the upper end of the valve. And now it seems that it, it's 48 centimeters. Then you could take the manual, check how many shaft extensions we need and carry on like that. But myself, I always want to try in real life and then fix if I have some problems. So take the base shaft and now I have a feeling that two extensions are enough. I'm gonna put the extensions on. Like this, screw it a little bit, then I'm gonna take the chuck from the accessory box. And the hole saw, which in this case is going to be 121 millimeters. The reason for that is because Danfoss ball valves bigger than 100 are reduced bore. So it means DN150 has an opening of 125 millimeters. So we will choose a hole saw 121. We will put the hole saw to the chuck, tighten it just a little bit, take a little bit back so that the pins that actually lock the hole saw will find the holes of the hole saw like this. Then we're gonna lock the pins with the shaft by turning the chuck in place, like this. So now 
The shaft is assembled, the whole saw is in place. Now we just need a pilot drill. For this drilling, because the cutter is not so long, we're gonna choose the normal pilot drill. Before we insert the pilot drill, we want to put the magnet to the pilot drill. The magnet goes to the pilot drill and the magnet will take some of the waste that comes from the cutting and it will force it to stay in the cutter so that it does not make any harm to the ceilings of the valve. We're gonna put the pilot drill in place, tighten it first just a little bit and check that the pilot goes to the notch like this and then we're gonna make the final final tightening just a little bit like this. Now the shaft is assembled. It should be the right size. Then we're gonna put some, because it's a steel pipe, we're gonna put some Tonisco metal cutting paste to the tip of the pilot drill and to the hole saw. The metal cutting paste will make the cut easier and also make the pilot drill and the cutter last longer. After this, we're gonna put the shaft to the valve. Just put it there, like this. Then we're gonna take the threaded adapt adapter, put it on the shaft, you could also build the complete the machine already with the adapter and all, but then it, it sometimes can be a little bit hard to get those threads in line. So this is, I usually choose to do it like this. And now, now the adapter has a counterclockwise thread, which means that it will be, it will tighten counterclockwise. So I'm gonna find the starting point Hold the shaft and tighten the adapter. And because the O-ring ceiling is on the top, we want to use the special tool to finalize the tightening of the adapter. Like this. You don't have to excessively tighten it, just that it goes in place. Now we have the shaft, the adapter. Then we take the body of the machine from the suitcase. Remove the feed socket. Check that the seating is clean. Add some lubricant. Connect the machine to the adapter. And in here, it's always good to lift the shaft a little bit. So that the adapter threads can be easily, or the body can be easily mounted to the adapter. Like this. Now, the pilot is touching the pipe surface. The body is tightened on the adapter. Now it's a good time 
to check that when the shaft is upright position, that the valve has enough space to close. This is also really important. Especially because with these Tonisco tools, you can hot tap through any type of valve. So it's, this is really important to always check that the valve has space to close before you start hot tapping. Then lift the shaft all the way up completely and close the valve. Like this. Now we see that the shaft has plenty of space. The valve can move freely. So now this is good. Then fully open the valve again. Slower or uh, place the shaft to the pipe again. Now we're good to proceed. Then the next step is to take the feed socket, fully open it. By opening always the feed socket fully, it will automatically find the right starting point, if the shaft is the correct length. Like this. Place it on the shaft. And now, we see that the notch that the feed socket selected is the last notch that there is. So this means that we may end up in a situation where we do not have enough drilling distance to make the, the drilling. Therefore, we can conclude that the shaft is actually too short. But no worries. That's why we have also a shaft extension socket in the kit. We can just simply put it on top of the shaft and insert the socket again. And now we see that the starting point has changed and it's not the last one but the second last which is really good so now we're good to start so basically by using the shaft extension socket we didn't have to disassemble the whole package it's simply put the socket on the shaft and we're good to go so now the adapter is tight the socket is in the right place. The next step is to do a test pressure. The pressure test is something that you have to do every time because it is so much easier to fix the welding seams if there's a leak before we penetrate the pipe. So it's really important to always do a pressure test. You can use compressed air or compressed water. In this case, we are going to use compressed air because it's a little bit co more convenient and it's easier to see the, see the leaks. I'm gonna take the compressor, attach it to the control cock, pressurize the drilling chamber, take the manometer so that we can monitor the pressure 
pressurizes. We take the leak detection spray. And we check all the welding seams. Like this. If you want, you can also check the ceilings of the adapter. And also the ceilings of the machine. I cannot highlight enough how important it is to check the welding seams and every, every seam that will stay on the pipe. Because you cannot, you cannot do anything with anything about those after the pilot drill has penetrated the pipe. Okay, we see that there's no leaks. We have, we have uh, the pilot drill, we have the magnet in place, we have the cutting paste in the cutter and the pilot. We have the feeding socket adjusted. So the next step is to remove the pressure from the drilling chamber. Put the manometer back on. Take the drive unit from the suitcase. Insert it to the shaft. And always, if you need to turn the shaft, always turn it clockwise so that the threads won't open themselves. Then secure the drive unit with the locking screw. And this is also something that you should always do. Always secure the drive unit to the shaft with the locking screw. By doing this, you will make the shaft and the drive unit and the whole machine a solid part. And it will make the hot tub cutting much smoother. Okay, now we have the drive unit secured. Then we put on the electricity. But before starting the hot tub, we have to remember the to gear up and put our safety equipment. So the cap is gone. We're gonna take the eye protection and a helmet. Secure the strap. And also earplugs if needed. And then before we start, we want to make sure that we have a we have um, an environment where we can start with a good posture. It's really important to have a good posture when holding the drive unit and feeding the cutter. Therefore, always make sure that you find a good posture for yourself to hold the machine. So, because the turning motion will put some pressure on the drive unit, so you want to put the counter, counter pressure from your body. And for the pilot drill drilling, you want to choose the fastest possible RPM. In this case, it means selecting gear number two from the drive unit and the fastest RPM from the RPM selector. Take a good poster, good stand, a little bit back from the feed socket so that the shaft can turn in the beginning freely. And now you can start the pilot drill drilling. Always when cutting, do not use excessive force. Let the machine do the work. Every time, if you really need to use force, 
you know that something is wrong. Then you have to check that if the pilot drill is broken or the cutter is not, not sharp or something. But in a normal case, you, you don't have to use any power when feeding the cutting. The manometer here will tell us when we penetrate the pipe. So also control the manometer when doing the pilot drill drilling. Now we see that the pressure starts to build up in the manometer. It means that the pilot drill has penetrated the pipe. Then let's take a few extra turns. Like this. And now, now we know that the pilot drill has penetrated the pipe. Then we want to take away the small space between the pilot drill and the hole saw. We take away the, the space by feeding freely without turning. And also here, we can hear when the barbed wires touch the pipe if there is no extra noise. So take away the empty space. It's easy to feel it when the feeding doesn't go anymore. So now the whole saw is touching the pipe. Then we can check how much distance we still have for the, for the actual drilling. Here it seems that we, we have enough space for the, also for the whole saw cutting. So for the whole saw cutting we want to take a little bit back and adjust, adjust the RPMs of the drive unit to, to a little bit slower. We take the number one from the gear selector and take it a little bit back from the RPM selector. Then we take even better stance and slowly start the whole saw cutting. And also with the whole saw cutting, you do not want to over, over feed. If you have a partner, you can make it so that the partner will hold the electric drive unit and the other guy can do the, do, do the feeding with the socket. But it also goes solo. When the hole saw penetrates the pipe, you can hear it from the drive unit and you can also feed it from the socket. It's not a speed race, so try to, try to feed slowly and let the machine do the work. Uh, after the penetration, we always want to double check that the hole saw has gone through. So let's take a few more turns. then stop the electric drive unit and use only the feed socket to verify that the whole saw is true. Like this. Then we can take away the manometer so that we don't accidentally, accidentally uh, hit on it. Then we're going to release the shaft all the way up and close the valve. And if the pressure is less than 12 bars, you can use your own body weight. If and also if and when in the bigger, uh, bigger pressures, you will use a chain block to help with the lifting of the shaft. But now it's only six bars, so I can use my body weight. I'm gonna open the feed socket. 
release it and slowly let the machine take the shafts up. Like this. Before closing the valve, we can take away the drive unit. And also remove the feed socket. And by doing this, we will remove all the excessive weight on the shaft so that when we, in the last stage, when we depressurize the drilling chamber, the shaft do not drop on the ball. So let's take the feed socket away, shaft extension socket away. Before closing the valve, we want to take as much waste, drilling waste, away from the chamber as possible. And we're gonna do that by flushing the drilling chamber. We take the pressure relief hose, insert it to the control cock, place the hose away from ourselves and flush the drilling chamber. Like this. After we have flushed the drilling chamber, we can close the valve. The mark on the chuck will tell us when the valve is fully closed. Like that. Then we take the pressure relief hose again. We insert it to the control cock and depressurize the drilling chamber. If you have a partner, it would be good that the partner could uh, hold the shaft while emptying the drilling chamber so that the shaft do not drop on the ball. I don't have a partner now, so I'm gonna slowly depressurize it like this and hold the shaft myself. I'm gonna place the shaft over the pole and fully depressurize. Now we have depressurized the drilling chamber. The valve is closed. Then we can disassemble the machine and the adapter by opening it by turning clockwise, like this. And I always like to also hold the shaft while I'm opening the adapter, just trying to avoid hitting the ball with the shaft, like this. Fully open it. And now we see that the coupon is there. There's no excessive waste or cuts. And you would say this is a successful hot tub now but it's not over yet. Now we have to disassemble the machine, clean everything and put everything back to the suitcase. By doing that, the machine will last forever. So disassemble the shaft by first removing the pilot drill. Like this. Remove the pilot drill with the coupon. Take away the coupon. 
clean the pilot drill, take away the magnet, clean the magnet, and then we're gonna open the chuck and remove the hole saw. For that, we're gonna need the shaft opening pins and the two special Tonisco keys. Put the shaft on a clean and even position. Take the Tonisco special wrench, slide it on the shaft. Then also a little bit help with the hammer, slide it on the extension, secure it with the locking pin. That. Then put the other end of the other edge on the chuck and easily hit on the chuck. Hit on, hit on the chuck. It should when you do the disassembly immediately after the hot tap, it should not be so tight. Remove the chuck, remove the pins, open the hole saw. Remove the hole saw, clean the chuck, put it back on the suit case, slide the wrench on the shaft, secure it with the pin. Like this, and then open the shaft or the extension. Then clean everything, put everything on the suit case and the machine will last forever.